I'm Jonathan Littman. And I'm Susanna Camp. And we'd like to tell you about our new book, uh, The Entrepreneur's Faces. This is a book about finding your archetype. We think of it almost as your superpower. Uh, my background quickly is I, I wrote two big books with IDEO, uh, a famous innovation firm. Actually wrote a lot about crazy computer hackers who I think of as sort of criminal entrepreneurs. And then I met Susanna uh, several years ago in San Francisco. We found out that we had been working for competing Macintosh publications. I was at Macworld at one point and John was at Macweek. I was also at Wired very early on, Wired Magazine, building one of the first websites in the world. I was building the community there and I hosted events with celebrities like Yoko Ono and other and Bill Bradley and uh, some of the politicians and musicians of the day in the early 90s. Uh, we went on to start a website together. It's called smartup.life. And for the past five years, we've written a weekly story about innovation there. Right. And what we started to see five years ago was this just furious entrepreneurial action in San Francisco. You know, so many young entrepreneurs, so much venture capital. We saw people coming from all over the world and we would give innovation labs. And we realized we saw different kinds of entrepreneurs, that they had essentially different mindsets in personalities. Mm, different personalities, different nationalities. We saw people coming from all over the world to San Francisco to learn about the Silicon Valley mindset and all of the networking opportunities here. We wanted to go out and meet those people where they were coming from. So we set out on a journey to go to 14 different countries over the span of about a year and a half. We interviewed hundreds of founders and we found some people who really knew how to tell their story as well. And we were able to amplify those stories for them in our new book. Yeah. And we didn't want it to be about one billionaire, you know, famous uh, entrepreneur. We wanted them to be accessible. So we have very different kinds of entrepreneurs. As Susanna mentioned, we actually have an entrepreneur from Finland. We have, we have two from tiny Estonia, you know, another from Paris and they're, actually all different kinds of businesses. And we feel this gives you sort of more of a rainbow effect of, of what's possible for you. People really are at an advantage when they come from a country that is very supportive of entrepreneurship. There are many, many countries out there, uh, especially Estonia, but also France and Portugal that support entrepreneurship from a very early age. They've got programs for high school students and college students. They, they fund accelerators and incubators to really bring some of those best ideas to life. And those are some of the places where we met people. We also uh, met some great entrepreneurs here in Silicon Valley, uh, including in San Francisco and down at at Stanford, at Stanford Launchpad. Yeah. And let me jump in there. So Stanford plays a, a large part in our book. We have a classic archetype called the maker. And, and the maker is, is someone who makes, someone who prototypes. This, this is a famous archetype in Silicon Valley. It's essential. And it turns out that the gentleman we profiled um, had a startup. He actually made snowshoes these amazing snowshoes. He was the first to sort of have modern snowshoes. And he went on to become a professor at Stanford and create something called Stanford Launchpad, which was essentially a maker university, a 10 week course that students would go through and start companies. And they've created half a billion dollars of value. And that was sort of one of our first archetypes. But as Susanna will tell you, we, we found other archetypes along the way. Yeah. Beyond the maker, there is the uh, evangelist. That's one of my favorite types. The evangelist really knows how to tell a story well, to move hearts and minds and get people excited about their venture and about a particular field 
Perry Clabin, the maker we've just been talking about, was also an evangelist for making and for entrepreneurship. He taught students to prototype not just physical products, but uh, digital products and to prototype parts of the business process, like the whole, the sales and the supply chain. So entrepreneurs think about business models a lot. And one of our archetypes is a very uh, important business model today. It's the archetype of the conductor. So we had a young man named Carlos Muela. I was teaching actually entrepreneurship at the University of San Francisco. I met him there. His parents were, you know, in the restaurant business. They had tapas restaurants, but he didn't want to stay in that classic mindset. And he saw the growth of food trucks. And he thought, what if I do something different with food trucks? Because it turns out food trucks don't actually have often enough places to sell. It's often against the law to just stop up in the street. So as a conductor, he created a platform. He found an empty lot, which was you know, filled with homeless and really uh, wasn't so attractive. And he designed it into this food truck park. And then he became the conductor for a dozen food trucks that would come you know, for lunch and for dinner. It was so successful, he actually built a second one and he built a, a mini golf course. And of course, he no longer had to hire all the staff for all the restaurants. He was you know, contracting this. And the beautiful thing about great business models is sometimes you can stumble onto the next source of revenue. And he became a food truck broker. So because he earned the trust of 300 food trucks, he would now send out food trucks to destinations like famous places like Airbnb and Google and so forth, send out trucks and receive a commission. So it was a great example of, of diving into that mindset. The It's ironic because uh, this conductor, Carlos Muela, is conducting his business and connecting his network in the shadow of Salesforce Tower, which is one of the biggest buildings in the world and built by one of the, the most famous conductors, uh, Mark Benioff. We also, we yeah, I was just jump in, you know, another famous guy, uh, uh, there's a guy named Craig. You may have heard of Craig. Well, Craig was a programmer uh, who was bored. Uh, he was an introvert. He didn't have friends and he started researching events in San Francisco and he created Craigslist. And this is a very different type. This is the accidental. And while Craig had no intent to make money, um, this is one of obviously the biggest sites in the world. And, and Craig Newmark is worth billions today. We find that connecting the types that we've written about in our book to famous models of famous entrepreneurs is helpful for our readers so that they can they can sort of see what models to aspire to. It's not always the the famous model where you read the story and it's kind of a, a hagiography of all the the this this the wonderful things that this particular entrepreneur has done and this journey to success, which in hindsight seems so obvious. How could anybody make any different moves? But we cover a uh, arc of entrepreneurship that starts with the awakening and it moves, which is when you have your idea and you can choose to wake up and move forward and embrace the, the big moves ahead and make something out of this, or you can go back to sleep. People we wrote about went on to the shift, which is the next stage. John, do you want to talk about the shift? Yeah, the shift is where you make stuff happen. A lot of people talk and that can be a problem. If you just talk, if you just have a business plan and the shift is where you begin to prototype. We also, the next stage is uh, the place. Now you might think now today in the pandemic, you don't need a place, but actually you need it even more. And, and often you can find your place in a digital network, a, a community of people uh, where you find your inspiration, you may find your mentoring. So we think of this as staged growth. Um, as you move 
beyond shifting uh, the place. What do you have to do if you want to be serious about an entrepreneur? <laughs> you have to launch. So this is sort of a core part. It's it's the fourth stage. And a lot of people who are tentative about this process don't launch and they put it off too long. And you have to launch before you think you're actually ready to launch. In order to keep going after the launch, you need money, of course. You need to pitch to investors or you need to find those early first customers to, that are going to um, embrace your product and get things moving. Uh, the money and, and the launch are, of course, not always, it's not a sequential um, it, the move. They're sort of intertwined with each other. Uh, but we sort of, we lay it out as a seven step process and we describe the money after the launch. Uh, the test, comes after yeah, the, the test the is money. where you find out if your if business model proves out. Mm -hmm. It's sort of do or die time. And, and a key thing to remember is a lot of the best entrepreneurs, in fact, some of the entrepreneurs in our book, it didn't test out at first and they had to change their business model. And this is the metal of an entrepreneur and, and often an entrepreneur's second or third business model or second or third startup is the one that's a success. And then you have the chance of the seventh stage, which is the scale. The scale is when you really make your dreams happen um, and kind of hit the big time. You may find that you will start again after that. It's not always, it's not necessarily the end stage and certainly not for the entrepreneurs that we've covered in our book who kind of keep going after the scale and start up again with another business. And, and a core thing we've discovered through these archetypes is that you may find your core archetype, but you actually may be inspired to grow into another one. Uh, my core archetype happens to be the athlete, and the athlete is a bit what it sounds like. You love crazy deadlines. You love competition. You love impossible jobs. You're sort of the anti-corporate, you know, keep everything the same mindset. And I also want to grow into a type um, we haven't talked that much about, which is the outsider. And the outsider is, of course, the founders of Airbnb the founders of Uber, people who actually knew nothing about the in industry. And then they decided to go in as essentially as a beginner's mind, as an amateur and bring fresh ideas. So we think there's strength in aspiring to another type. And one of the reasons that we built our model as a sort of holistic model where it was the types are not mutually exclusive is that I grew up with archetypes. <laughs> I know them very well. My father was a Jungian scholar. He was fascinated by the archetypes, including the, the outlaw and the innocent, which are in, on opposite sides of the spectrum. And you can't necessarily find yourself in the middle without being confused about who you are. My mother was certified to give the Myers-Briggs test. So as a teenager, I was given this test dozens of times. I was an introverted kid, uh, always trying to trick this test uh, to show me that I was actually the extrovert and that didn't work out so well for me. I've taken other tests in business settings, uh, the Enneagram, the DISC, which uh, separates people into different types, dominant or, um, I forget what the S is, but I think it might be submissive. <laughs> Nobody wants to <laughs> identify as a submissive type to their coworkers who are more dominant. Yeah. So, so we, we really wanted to show people that you can embrace a range of archetypes. Of course, find your strengths and uh, find that superpower that's going to really um, help you in business and in life. Yeah, and, and the entrepreneurs, uh, uh, our site, entrepreneurs.com, Susanna, who is the maker, by the way, created this great quiz where you can discover your core type. And we love to hear from people to hear their type and maybe a type they're aspiring toward. And 
we'd like to think that the fact that you have 10 amazing people to sort of learn from in the book, that you, that you can see where different types may be important at different stages of this journey, of these seven stages. So you may need certain types more, for instance, at the launch and, and more during the money. You can find that quiz at theentrepreneursfaces.com. Uh, take the quiz, tell us who you are, uh, connect with us at hello at theentrepreneursfaces.com. Of course, the book is also available on Amazon. So The Entrepreneur's Faces, How Makers, Visionaries, and Outsiders Succeed. You can find that there. And we think it's, it's time for entrepreneurial people. Um, there have been more companies started in the last several months than there have been in 12 years. Um, tremendous growth in venture capital, starting of new em- enterprises. Clearly, old ways aren't going to work. Entrepreneurship thrives in a crisis. Uh, you, we've seen this in uh, 2008 when we had a financial crisis. Uh, P- Portugal is famous for its entrepreneurship. Uh, they, back in uh, 2011, were subjected to austerity measures where the government was in uh, major debt and needed to uh, show that they could get out of it. And uh, many people at that time in Portugal took their uh, unemployment as a lump sum to seed their their ventures and, 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 and pull themselves through this crisis. And the same thing we think is happening right now in America. We're going to have some stimulus soon. We think a lot of those funds, a lot of the new investment is going to be in fresh new approaches toward you know, the new habits, the new trends that have emerged during this crisis. And we hope our book gives folks a bit of a personal roadmap, sort of a human roadmap on how they might be part of this revolution. We gave this book to our community um, as of entrepreneurs as a way of, um, of, of showing them to find strength in the coming years and uh, uh, launch now um, and um, kind of seize, seize this moment, uh, especially now after the inauguration. Uh, we feel like 2021 is going to be a great time to uh, launch your business. And we bet that you're going to hear the word entrepreneurship. You're going to hear the word entrepreneurs, entrepreneurial thinking and innovation a lot more in 2021. So, Thank you.